I'll share a few thoughts with you. So, our reading. With Peter's missionary journey in Acts chapter 10 and 11, we find God making preparations for the admittance of Gentiles into the church. In Acts chapter 10, we hear about the conversion of Cornelius, a Roman centurion who was a worshipper of God. Peter's vision in Acts chapter 10 and 11 highlights a fundamental issue regarding clean and unclean food. And this will ultimately involve the apostles in Jerusalem, the church leaders locally, the circumcised believers, the uncircumcised believers, and the Gentiles, the non-Jews. One might also reason that Luke is exercising a little bit of license here, as he appears to be condensing the actual time frame, I believe, to incorporate the conversion of a Gentile with a vision confronting Jewish food regulations. And it all starts with Peter's vision of a white sheet being let down from heaven, containing clean and unclean food. With the instruction to Peter, get up, Peter, kill, eat, enjoy. So what? What is Peter supposed to make of this? Surely it goes completely in the face of everything he has always known and scrupulously followed. And it is reasonable to suggest that everyone will roundly condemn him for even thinking this could possibly be okay, let alone flying in the face of accepted practice. The sheet is let down from heaven, full of ritually clean and forbidden food. So what would your white sheet, your tablecloth, look like? Perhaps a selection of all the things God has made available. My white sheet. My white sheet. Well, I do like all potatoes, absolutely love them. And I do love baked beans, Heinz, of course. But would God really force me to eat swede, turnips, green beans, and of course, salad? Is salad a vegetable? Denise was asking me the names of the flowers outside. Not a clue. And surely God wouldn't send down nets full of fish. I do actually, of course, eat scampi sometimes, which I've been told is a sort of fish. But proper fish? Ooh, I don't think so. God might also send down locusts and other insects to be deep fried. They are apparently very trendy at the moment. And I see God laughing loudly when he sees the faces that I would most likely begin to pull. So what would be on your white sheet? Are you okay with offal? Yes, I love offal. Surely. Our national traditional full English fry up would be included on the white sheet. But what if you're a principal, convicted, uh, responsible vegetarian or vegan? And ultimately, the big question 
would God send down Marmite? God is surely saying, I have made all of this and I have made it good, good for you. Everything is in for us to eat and to enjoy. I believe we still retain the free choice, but perhaps we need to be a bit more considered in our choices, our preferences, our responses, even our justifications. This vision and instruction for Peter must have been excruciating. And we can also see how this message parallels the fundamental historic differences between Jews and Gentiles, the rest of the world. There could be no contact between those of Jewish birth, i.e. law-abiding and circumcised Jews, and Gentiles and uncircumcised Christians, especially when it comes to food, highlights one major difference. Two sides, two camps, and Peter has crossed the line by responding to the invitation from the three men in Caesarea to make a house call. In another sense, our white sheet might also include a spectrum of views and positions in respect of obvious things like ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, abortion, armed response, jail sentences, politics, extension rebellion activists. In-house, it might be the leadership team, membership, interpretation of scripture, even song and hymn choices. It might also be to do with joining or separating, building up or tearing down or reaching out. Who's in and who's out? Who is welcome and who might feel a little uncomfortable. Are we any good at sewing and sharing? Hospitality and inviting. I've mentioned before uh, being asked to leave a very large, well-established Baptist church when it came to sharing communion at the end of the service. I was not one of them. And my indelible experience as a child in a poor part of London, walking along with my mother, my brother, room to rent, but no dogs or Irish. We didn't have a dog. Who may present this event as a short, transforming act over one or two chapters. But the reality, I believe, may well have been that this took some considerable time to unfold, no doubt with strongly expressed views and heated debate even. Such are deeply held positions. So what might God place on our white sheet to consider? Part of my thinking here is quite speculative. I'm aware that we, like most church fellowships, have important issues and challenges to confront and to work through. Some faithfully held positions 
are often based on individual conviction of the truth as found in scripture. And sometimes the overwhelming strength and solid reassurance of tradition will underpin our faithful obedience. We might also consider that a deep-seated or nurtured experience even, or inherent prejudice may well color our views. The really interesting point in today's reading is about the Jew and the Gentile in respect of ritually clean and unclean food. Rather than the receiving of the Holy Spirit by a Roman centurion and a whole host of non-Jewish households. There seems to be unreconcilable differences over food, but the evidence shows that the Holy Spirit can be received by Jew and Gentile alike. Just extend Gentile its widest possible spectrum of people you come into contact with. Is it more to do with food rather than God's spirit? This was revealed to Peter and others too were convinced through his testimony. Verse nine. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and then it, the white sheet, was pulled up to heaven again. God's spirit brought three men from Caesarea to seek out Peter to receive the message by which they and their households could be saved. As Peter began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them also. Peter remembered that the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And Peter continued. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? They had no further objections and praised God saying, so then God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. Let's ask God to bring down his white sheet for us so that we may be less distracted by a range of things that God has already made good in order to clearly focus on our mission to share the good news to all who are seeking life in Jesus Christ. We pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for our lives in you. Lord, please see that we're not a bad bunch, really. We do try, we mess up, but we come back to you again and again. And Lord, may we bring down from heaven your word, your truth, and your Holy Spirit to equip us to serve you 
and Christ in the way that you ask. Lord, please bless us as we seek to follow you. In Christ's name, amen. The band's